Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining us from. Thank you for taking time out of your day for the Salesforce Admins webinar, Master the New Lightning Report Builder. Uh, if you have been paying attention, this is the second time that we're doing this webinar. Uh, and this time, uh, based on feedback we got from the first webinar, we're actually going to take a little bit more time. So today's webinar is actually going to run about 45 minutes. It's going to give us time to go a little bit deeper, uh, show some more features, take it really slow so that uh, folks can see all the latest and greatest. So please make sure you've budgeted enough time. And of course, this webinar is being recorded. I am Mark Baseman, an admin evangelist here at Salesforce. And with me today is Liz Skates, product manager. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Wouldn't be a webinar without our forward-looking statement. We are going to be making some forward-looking statements today, so please make sure to base your purchasing decisions only on products and services that are currently available. And we are where you are on all of the social things, so please get social with us. We are on Twitter at Salesforce Admin, no I, and you can connect with other awesome admins using Salesforce with the hashtag AwesomeAdmin. And of course, we are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube with the handle SalesforceAdmin. And we have an incredible website at admin.salesforce.com where you will find all of our previous webinars and blog posts and the podcast and lots of great stuff. So please make sure to check that out. Yes, as I mentioned before, the webinar is being recorded, and the video and slides will be posted to YouTube and the webinar recap page at the bit.ly link here. If you would like to ask questions, and I suspect that many of you would, in fact, like to ask questions, please do it using the admin webinar group in the Trailblazer community. You can see the bit.ly link here. Make sure the A, W, and G are capitalized. You don't have to wait until the end to ask your question. Um, we'll be scanning the community throughout the webinar. And uh, time permitting, and I think we will have time today, we'll be answering those questions live at the end of the session. So let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. First, we're going to talk about understanding the new Lightning Report Builder. And we're going to talk about building reports and dashboards. We're going to talk a little bit conceptually about building reports and dashboards. So I want you to know we are going to get into the actual Lightning Report Builder, but we wanted to lay some conceptual groundwork for how to think about building reports and dashboards. We got some feedback on the last webinar that we spent so much time thinking about it before we got into the actual Lightning Report Builder. So just know up front, we want to lay this conceptual framework so that when you are building reports, you're asking yourself these same questions. And then I promise you, we'll get into the demo and get into the Lightning Report Builder itself. Uh, then we'll do the live demo. We'll, I'll share some resources with you, and then we'll get into the Q&A. So let's talk about understanding the new Lightning Report Builder. Liz, take it away. Great. So now that the Lightning Report Builder is generally available in Summer 18, all Lightning users can quickly and easily build reports. One difference with Classic is that in Lightning, the, the changes between tabular, summary, and matrix formats is more flexible now. You can easily switch the formats just by adding or removing row groups or column groups. You can save your reports to folders and subfolders, or you could just run your report without saving. And you could also, after you build your report, add, to the, add your report chart to the dashboard directly. Awesome. So now we're going to talk about building reports and dashboards. But in order to do that, we thought it might be helpful to have a scenario. So let's check out our scenario here. So Swagco, which is the company that Liz and I work for, has some questions about sales. So Swagco produces custom plush toys of characters. We won't name which ones. And they use Salesforce to manage their sales process. Liz and I work together to gain insights on sales. So we need to answer some key questions. What are all the deals that we've closed this year? How much did we close this year in business? Who are my top salespeople? What percentage of our total business did each salesperson close? And how much did each person close each quarter this year? So I am the VP of sales, and these are the questions that I want. And Liz is my trusty Salesforce administrator. So 
I'm going to turn it over to Liz to take us through how to think about these questions and then to actually create the reports to do that. Great. So now that we know what questions Mark is asking, let's map out a plan for how to find out those answers. So I recommend that we take four steps when building reports. First, we zero in on what is the most relevant data to answer his business questions. So that means determining what report types we need to use, what columns we want to display on the report, and what filters we need to apply. Next step would be to organize those reports into groups if you need to calculate metrics on each of those groups and or to compare those groups. And then once you've grouped those, uh, those records into groups, you want to calculate those metrics. And then the last step is the most fun, is now that everything's been grouped and calculated, you can add a chart to visualize those metrics easier, easily. So let's go on to the next, uh, the first step. The first step is uh, determining what data is relevant. And remember Mark's questions, we're going to uh, review Mark's questions, but a lot of his questions had to do with the deals that were closed this year. So he wanted to know like which deals his team had won, how much they were worth, who closed them, and how the wins break down by quarter. So they all have to do with deals, which are also known in Salesforce as opportunities. So the report type we want to use is opportunities. Uh, and Mark is probably interested in knowing uh, for the display columns, probably the opportunity owner then, the name of the deal, how much it was worth, and what the close date was. And since a lot of those questions were about this year, we want to make sure that we filter down by just the deals that were owned by Mark's team that were closed this fiscal year and which we won. So we don't want to look at the ones that are still active in progress or that we lost. Moving on to the next step. Now that we know which records we're zeroing in on, what's the best format for getting those answers to those questions? So looking at uh, the first two questions, what are all the deals that we closed this year and how much did we close this year? We really just need the default format, which is just a list. When you create a report, it's just a list of all the records that meet your criteria. And that will tell us what the deals are that were closed this year. And it will give us a total for how much we closed this year. And so, so those, that format is perfect for answering the first two questions that Mark had, um, if that's all we need. And if we don't need charts, um, and we don't need any other information, that's fine. But remember, Mark had more than two questions. Always, always. <laughs> the LGBT has so many questions. So this format will, uh, is not quite enough. We move on to looking at another format. Um, and so looking at the other questions that he had, he wants to know who his top salespeople are and what percent of the total business did, did they close. So that tells me that we need to organize those records by who owned them so that we can calculate how much each person closed and then figure out who closed the most. So that means we group those records by the opportunity owner, and then the calculations we want to do on each group are the, the, the sum total of the, those deals as well as what percentage those deals comprise of the total for the team. Uh, so this format which is grouping by rows, should give us the answers to those two additional questions. Now, if you're used to building uh, reports in Classic, you'll recognize that this is called a summary report in that we're summarizing uh, these deals by the owner. But we just, uh, in, in reality, just grouped the rows. Now, we had a final question, though, that Mark had asked, which is, how much did each person close each quarter this year? So on top of just calculating how much the deals were worth for each person and the percentage, we also want to break them down by the quarter. So once, once uh, I, I, I realize I have to break it down, then I know I need to introduce column groupings for those breakdowns, which uh, brings us to this other format that if you're used to building reports in Classic, would recognize this as a matrix report. And this format could, could still also be used for adding charts to dashboards, and you can create subtotals on the breakdowns as well as the original groupings by owner. All right, so we've identified that this format, which is a matrix report, uh, matrix format, which has row groupings and column groupings, is probably the best format to answer all five of Mark's questions. So we'll move on to step three, 
which is to determine what the calculations are on each of these groupings that we've uh, identified. So remember, his first question was, what are the deals we closed this year? At most, we might want to calculate how many deals there were. And then how much we closed this year is just adding the amounts of each of those deals and what they're worth. So that's a summation on the amount field. Who are my top salespeople uh, means just summing the amount per owner for the deal. And uh, so this question, how much did each person close each quarter this year, is also a, a summation on the amounts, but just by quarter as well. The fourth question is a little bit more involved. Uh, if you want to calculate the percentage of the total business that each person closed, it does require a little bit more um, calculation because you want to add the amounts for all those deals for the owner, but then divide it by the total amount for the deals for the team. So there's more of a, a formula that's involved here, and we're going to dive into uh, how that formula is derived in the next slide. Also, if you're panicking when seeing this formula, in our resources section, we're going to point you to learning more about uh, report formulas. So don't panic. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to zero in on an example of what this report will look like uh, in this matrix format so that we can do those calculations that we discussed earlier. So the counts and the amount sums are all pointed out. So you have a lot of um, summations. So you can see like Cindy Central uh, closed $41,000 worth of business in the first quarter of 2018. And then if you all, go all the way to the right, you see that uh, for the entire year for 2018, she closed 234000 And so that's what we call the grand summary for that row. So we call that a row grand summary. And the, uh, so Cindy closed 41000 for uh, quor the first quarter of the year. Uh, Liz, that's me. I closed 121000 that year, and so on and so forth. Nice sales quarter, Liz. Good <laughs> Thank job. Thank you. Um, and so for the, for the first quarter, the team closed 305000 So that bottom, that total right there you see on that last row, is the grand summary for that column. So we call that the column grand summary. And you notice, um, if we want to calculate the percentage that each person contributed to the team total, we take their row grand summary amount, and we divide it by the total for the team, which is the column grand summary for the row grand summary column. Um, and so that translates to this formula that you see at the bottom that says, take the amount sum and divide it by its parent, which is the, the column grand summary for it. Um, so it, if you want to dive deeper into that, there, there are references for that, but that's the formula we're going to use for that calculation. And let's move on to step four, which is now deciding what charts we want to use to display uh, these answers and these calculations uh, on a dashboard. So for all the deals that we closed this year, maybe we want a table that lists all those deals so that Mark can see those deals. Uh, how much did we close this year? Probably a gauge chart will give us a, a good idea of that, how much we closed. A bar chart, you know, classic way of, of showing a sales leader, leaderboard. And then the percentage of total business for each person might be best represented by a donut chart. And then maybe a stacked bar chart if we want to show the breakdown per quarter for each person. Let's switch over to a demo so we can build that, the, that report live. All right. So now I'm logged into Lightning, and in the Reports tab, in Summer 18, there's actually two buttons available to me to create a report. Uh, I click click on New Report Salesforce Classic, which opens the embedded Classic Builder within Lightning that we're used to up until now. But the New Report button now will actually launch the Lightning Report Builder. Quick question, Liz. If I have a classic report, can I edit that report in the new Lightning Report Builder? Yes, you can, and vice versa. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, so now that I'm creating a new report in the Lightning Report Builder, the first screen I see is a report type selector screen. It's the same as in classic, actually. It just is a Lightning version of that same screen. So remember, I want to build a report that shows all the deals from this year, and remember, that's an opportunities report type. So I can, can navigate to the folder for opportunities, let's say, or I can search for the opportunities report type and then click on that and continue. And now the Lightning Report Builder loads with uh, some uh, default display columns 
uh, for my report type. So in the middle of the screen, this big area is uh, the preview grid, so that's very similar to the classic builder that you're used to, and it has uh, records from that report type. Um, and on the left is this new area called the outline panel, which is a great easy way for you to uh, change the format of your report. Um, so I would probably spend a lot of time here initially if I'm doing any formatting changes to my report. So for example, I know this is the opportunities report type, but remember we only want the deals, um, actually only certain columns to display for Mark. So I could either delete them individually, like maybe I'm not interested in the creative date, so I just click on the X or the probability and I click on the X. Or if I decide I just would rather delete all those default display columns, I can go here and choose remove all columns and then add the columns manually. So I can say I remember that I think the owner is an important field for Mark to see or there's also this field pane on the left that I can expand so that I can also search for fields. And this is also similar to classic from before. So maybe I'm looking for the name field that I want to add and I can drag that either to the outline panel or if I want to add the amount field now, I can drag that to the preview area as well. So I can drag and drop to any of these areas. Um, and I think the last deal thing that I wanted to show was the close date. And I can drag that back again here. And you can now search for fields by type and there's a pick list type in that little search magnifying glass. Yes, right. yes. And so if you expand right here, you can show just the text fields, the numeric fields, the checkbox fields, the date fields, or just pick lists. Yeah. Um, so once I have all my columns added, I could also reorder by just dragging and dropping up and down in this outline panel. I think it's a lot easier than dragging within the preview grid, which is also still possible. Right. So um, I've added my columns now. Another thing that I can do is I can uh, go to the filter panel. And remember, we wanted to only look at the deals that were closed this year by Mark's team. So uh, in the filters panel, I can say, show me just the opportunities, my team's opportunities. And the close date would be the current fiscal year. And where the status is, Close one. Now, I could still add more filters. In this case, this is all I need for my report, but it, I could add more filters, like if I was just interested in certain deals that were greater than $50,000 or $40,000 or that, you know, were of certain type. And I can just easily add those. And if I wanted, I could also add filter logic if I wanted to have ORs or AND logic awesome. between my custom. Beat uh, me to subjects. the question. Perfect. <laughs> so I could add filter logic and change that to an OR if I wanted. Or if I wanted, I could do cross filters too if I was interested in maybe excluding opportunities that have products or including only opportunities that have activities, so on and so forth. I don't need those in my report, so I'm actually going to delete these because I really am only interested in the ones that were closed, this, in all the ones that were won this year by Mark team. So I've restricted my uh, report to just the relevant data. The, the next thing I mentioned is uh, formatting all those records, right, in a way that would answer all those questions that Mark had. So remember, um, just having a list of records wasn't quite enough. Um, so we wanted to group them by who owns them, right? So one way to do that is just to drag the owner here to the add group section. So now automatically my report is updated to be a summary report, as some of you know from Classic. Um, it's just the re records grouped by who owns them. Or, and then I also want to group by column. So I could drag from close date to the group column section. And there I have it. Um, it's now a matrix report. So remember, I want to see them by quarter. So I'm going to group the dates by the fiscal quarter. And now I can see um, the breakdowns. And it had actually already calculated the sum of amounts for each of those uh, groupings. Um, you can always click on the amount field here and choose a different summation, uh, or an average, max, or min. That's where you can change that. 
for those numeric fields. And right now, in a matrix report, you always, um, you by default, will see it in this really concise view. Guess what? You can also look at it by detail. So I see here there's two records that were closed by Cindy in the third quarter. If I click on it, I can see the details of the two records that she closed. Or I could toggle it closed by toggling the detail rows off. All right, so now we have um, the, the report in a matrix format, and we do have the summations for the deals and the breakdowns by quarter. Remember, we also had one more calculation we had to do, and that was that custom summary formula where we calculated the percentages. And so now that the report is grouped, then you can add a custom summary formula. In the outline panel, in the column section, there would now be this option to add a summary formula column or I can add a bucket column. Well, we don't need that for my report, so we're just going to add a summary formula column. And you initially get this mini pop-up window. If you already have a formula here, you can just type it in quickly. I'm going to click on Switch to Full Editor at the bottom here so I can get a bigger window, and it'll, it gives me more help in building my formulas. So on the left here, I have a list of all the fields available to me that I might need to use to build my formula or I can switch the functions area, and I can also search for functions that I want to use in my formula. So remember, I'm trying to create a formula that calculates the percentage of team total that each person contributed. And that formula was the amount sum, so I can insert that here, divided by, and there was this function called parent group val that I can insert. And I can also use type ahead. I can say amount sum. And it's going to be calculated on a row plan summary. And the column grand summary for that. And I can check the syntax to make sure that I uh, see. Oh, yes. I did not check the select the format. Where do I want to apply this formula? It's going to be a percentage with two decimal points, and I'm going to apply it specifically on the opportunity owner because we want to know the percentage of each owner's contribution to the grand total. So I can check my syntax again, and it's like, yep, that's valid. I'm going to click Apply. And if people want to learn more about these, there's the help link that's right there, which will show you more about the report summary formulas, and there will be resources in the webinar slides themselves. Yeah. All right. So uh, now that I have this report, I could run without saving. And that's a new feature in the latest release, right? Lightning Report Builder supports the ability to run without save. If you still use the embedded classic builder, you would have to save the report before you could run it. Got it. Yes. All right, so here I have my report, on, and I ran without saving, but I'm going to edit because I just realized I want a chart for my report. So I can go back and I can edit and I can add a chart and I can choose to click on the chart properties and maybe I want a stacked bar chart um, and this is owner uh, grouped by owner and then stacked by the close date which is not bad I could always switch that around if I want I'm going to leave that as such uh, I'm going to save and run my report because I like it like this with the chart so I'm going to save it I'm going to call it deals one this year I can save it to a subfolder. So let's say somewhere under the sales executive reports folder. It runs by report, and I get the chart and the report right here. Now, this is my report, and it's got one chart associated with it. Remember, um, it actually answers all five of Mark's questions right here in this one report, but it's probably not easy for Mark to see those answers at a glance. It might be easy if we just create five different charts for, for Mark to see those five answers um, on a dashboard. So from this report, I can just click in this actions menu and click add to dashboard. And I might add it to a new dashboard or an existing one, but I'll create a new one called sales this year. And uh, so automatically, it knows that the, the report I was coming from, which was deals one this year, uh, will be used to add a chart. And I could choose any of these, or I could use the chart that I had defined on the report. I could add that. 
Um, and I could just rename this and I could call this um, deals by owner and porter. But um, remember, I, I wanted five different charts to answer those five different questions. So this one might give the breakdowns question an answer, but maybe uh, let's go and answer his four other questions. So we go back to the same report to answer those five questions. Go back to the deals one this year report. Um, and let's say this time I want to show that list of the top deals. Um, and I do want to see the opportunity name and the amount. Um, I can always add more columns if I want, um, up to 10 columns for uh, these dashboard tables. But I think I like these two columns. And I want to sort them by the amount descending. So I can see the top deals. And I'm going to call this top 10 deals this year, one this year. And I just want to display a maximum of 10 of them. So we'll add that. And then maybe I'll add another chart. Um, and we wanted to show from that same report a chart that showed how much we closed. So remember, let's, let's say a gauge would work. Um, and we could do add some numbers here and say anything under 500,000 is not really hitting on the mark, but a million is good. And then a million and a half is better. And then this is closed one this year. And then we click add. And it shows up down here and I can move that. And fourth question was uh, who his top salespeople are. So we can go, still go back to that same report, which has that question. But let's do a classic leaderboard, which is that bar chart with no breakdown. So let's not have a close date, just the opportunity owner. And we do show it by the sum of amount descending. And we'll call this the sales leaderboard. That shows up here. And I think there was one more question we wanted to answer. And, and that was the percentage that each person contributed to the team total. And we wanted a, a donut chart for that. So we can show the sum of amount uh, and who owned them. Yep, yeah, and see how much they percentage, uh, contributed. We can show the percentages that they contributed. And we can call this uh, percent a team total. And there we have a donut chart that we can show. And I can save that. And then now I can share this report with Mark so that he can see at a glance um, how we're doing with the deals that we've won this year. Let's say you wanted to subscribe me to this dashboard so it got sent every week. Mm, great question. So that Mark doesn't have to log into Salesforce to look at this dashboard regularly. We can just click on subscribe here. And then maybe on weekly on Thursdays at 10 a.m., we can send it either to me or we can send it to some other people that we have in our organization. Uh, who else do I have here? Maybe Deanna and Mark. I'll have to add you as a person in this org. Um, so we send it to a select set of people. So uh, I can receive this subscription as well as Deanna. So, uh, in Summer 18, you can uh, select multiple people in the subscription um, to receive this. And it's just my subscription, but with many people who get the, the dashboard with my subscription. One pro tip here is if you don't know how your manager wants the dashboards to look, is go ahead and create a bunch of visualizations and then sit down with that sales VP and say, hey, which one of these works for you? because you've gone through the hard work of building the report and building the dashboard components, give them the options of the things that are, make sense to them, mm -hmm. and then take off the stuff that they don't want to see. Yeah, so let's say if you know, I share this with Mark, and Mark says, hey, you know, I actually don't like the way that this, uh, this chart is formatted that, that says deals by owner and quarter. Can you change it to another format? Then I can go in and edit and say, hmm, well, maybe, if I showed it as a uh, horizontal uh, uh, stacked bar, and then I changed the grouping so it's closed date by uh, owner, maybe this would be a better way for him to visualize that. 
and see the breakdown. And then we can save that. Um, and you can show, you know, the same charts uh, with different uh, configurations and see which one works best. All right. So that's it for the demo. Um, let's switch back. And I see a question from Justin that's about to get answered. So hold tight, Justin. All right. So let's go look at a summary of what we just did. We built a, a, a report using the Lightning Report Builder, and then we added that report's chart to the dashboard with the Dashboard Builder, and then added more charts with that same report in the Builder. And we used the best practice there. There's one report to rule them all best practice of using the same report to answer multiple questions and using multiple charts in uh, the dashboard. And when we were building that report, we grouped the rows so that we could get a summary report, but then we also added grouping columns to make it a matrix report. We used aggregates, so we summed the amount of the deal, and then we used a custom summary formula to calculate the percentage that each person contributed to the team total. And then uh, just to get a sneak peek of what's coming in the next release, um, in addition to the Lightning Report Builder, you're going to see some changes in the report run page as well. Um, there's an, a, a beta version of the report run page. We're calling it the Enhanced Report Run Page, where you're going to see a lot of the similar, um, uh, similar interactions that you're seeing in the builder. So in the builder, you notice that there was a toggle to see the detail rows on and off at the bottom or the totals on and off at the bottom. That toggle is a really easy way to kind of um, essentially expand or collapse the row, whether you see the rows in a summary or a matrix report, and that will be available on this enhanced run page. Um, so, so there's cool things to look forward in the beta. Um, a lot of ask for joint reports, um, the ability to drill down in reports, actually that will be available in the, uh, the beta enhanced run page as well. Currency selector is coming to the report builder next release. Um, some more nifty features for subscriptions so that not only can you send your subscriptions to multiple people, but you can send them to a bunch of people in roles or public groups. That'll be a pilot that you can sign up for in the next release. And then people always said it's, uh, they want an easier way to find the reports or dashboards when they're, looking, when they're in their list views on reports and dashboards pages. So that's coming in Winter 19 as well. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Liz. This was amazing and hopefully helpful for the folks listening. So there are a ton of resources for you all to follow up on. So Trailhead is the fun way to learn Salesforce, and we have some great badges and super badges for you to earn, and they're here. Um, there's also some links to getting the most out of summary formulas and the general Salesforce analytics overview. Um, those are here as well. And please build and share your dashboard with the hashtag one report to rule them all. So let's get into some of the questions that have been asked. So uh, I'm popping into our community group here. So Justin, we just answered the can you subscribe public groups to dashboards. So that's coming. So stay tuned for that. Um, Deepa asks, is there a way to hide the classic report button in Lightning? I'm so glad you asked, Deepa. When you go into setup, um, there is an option under reports and dashboards uh, to hide the embedded classic builder um, for your org so that uh, all your users who create reports will only see one button for new reports and that one button will launch the Lightning Report Builder. Um, Donna, I see that you missed how we got to the formula editor. You'll be able to watch the recording at your leisure and see it. But there's a, there's a little button there that says uh, show full editor. Um, can you, Kevin asks, can you subscribe or send reports to people in your organization that don't have a Salesforce login? No. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, let me go back here. Um, uh, Jillian asks, uh, or Gillian, uh, is it on the roadmap to be able to group by more than one dimension in dashboard lightning tables? Um, it is on the roadmap to, uh, to support two column groupings in lightning dashboard tables. Um, we're trying to get that for spring 19. Uh, awesome. Thank you for looking statement, of course. Yes. Um, uh, another question from Justin, can I move multiple reports to subfolders at one time? Uh, it can be painful moving them one at a time. Yeah, uh, a, a, lot, a number of people have been asking for us. 
to, to provide that capability. Uh, in the app, in the Lightning app that is not currently available, we're looking to try to add that uh, in the app. Um, there is the bulk ability to do like, you know, bulk uh, moves in the metadata API uh, if, if you want to go that route today. Um, but we do want to add it to the Lightning app uh, in the near future. Awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, can you subscribe to reports that meet particular criteria in yeah. Lightning? Yeah, so that question is about uh, a functionality that is available in Classic where you can, we call them report notifications, where you can set a condition like, um, you know, I, tell me if the report actually had more than zero results, and then I'm interested, right? right. Um, so that we are working on that. We're hoping to get a beta for that in the Spring 19 release. Got it. Thank you. Um, can an admin pre-select default fields for a particular report type? Uh, great ask that we have not been able to support so far yet. Got it. Yeah. You can do it if you create a custom report type. Yeah. So there is a way to do it if you create a custom report type. And you can create a custom report type even for one of the quote-unquote standard reports. So if you wanted to create a custom report type of opportunities, opportunities with products or accounts with opportunities or something, you can yourself create a custom report type to do that. So I, I have done this. Yes. Um, uh, let's see, there's a bunch of questions in here. Um, will the formula show if you export a report to Excel? Uh, the formatted export should export that, yes. If you do a details export, uh, because it's details only, it, we're not doing a calculation, so you will not get that. Got it, okay. Um, can you set the dashboard to auto-refresh at specific intervals? Uh, there should, oh, in Classic, I think there was a, a dashboard scheduling thing. Um, if you're not able to, to do it with a normal subscription um, and you don't want to receive the email, like that's one way to do it in Lightning right now is just to subscribe to it on, on a regular basis. Got it. Uh, I think just the subscription by it, uh, scheduling it by itself is not available in Lightning. Okay. Um, there is a question here about uh, custom color palettes. Mm. Do we have the ability to do that? Um, looking into it, so, we, we do support like the themes and the colors in, in dashboards so that you can choose color palettes, but customizing a color palette itself is something we're considering for the future. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, something that I can share is there is going to be a new uh, Lightning Reports and Dashboards Super Badge. Um, it's actually currently being QA'd and they're targeting a release for this Super Badge in early August, so just a few weeks away. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, if you go into the current uh, Lightning, if you, excuse me, if you go into the current Reports and Dashboards Super Badge, there's a note there that says the new one is coming uh, in early August. So know that that is in QA right now being tested and uh, the plan is still to release that in August. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, Question, what happens if you edit a classic report in Lightning? Does it do something to the formatting of the report so it is no longer editable in classic? No. So uh, the report, you can edit in classic, save it, then open in the Lightning Report Builder, edit, save it. Um, it's just that, uh, yeah, you, I don't think you should lose anything, and, and you, it should not make the report not run anymore. It, it's just uh, which editor you want to use for editing it. Perfect. Um, are there any plans to allow dashboards to be exported? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I haven't heard the request for specifically export. You mean like printing, potentially? Yeah, let's say printing. Yeah, so that's something we'd like to get to in the next two plus releases, yeah. Okay, awesome. All right, um, there are a ton of questions. I know we haven't gotten to everything, but hopefully uh, we've gotten to a bunch of them. Um, thank you all so much. Please, please let us know what you thought of today's webinar. Fill out that GoToWebinar survey. We do take the results of that very seriously. Um, thank you all so much for joining us, and a big thanks to Liz, who did uh, just a fantastic job today. And hopefully the extended time on today's webinar allowed it to be able to breathe, and you all uh, got to enjoy the, the, the extended time with Liz. 
So keep your eyes open for the recording. It will be posted along with the slides, uh, and they will, you will be able to find those on the Salesforce admin website at admin.salesforce.com, and it will also be linked to the left-hand sidebar of the admin webinars group in the Trailblazer community. Thanks, everyone, for joining us.